So in terms of resolving before they get there, what steps can LGBTI couples take at the start of a relationship when the relationship's getting pretty serious and they're committed to each other? What are the, what's the legal advice you provide at that point? Yeah, look, I always encourage people to have really um, non-romantic decisions at that point about what might happen if their relationship ends. Um, look, in Australia, we do have what's called a binding financial agreement, which is effectively like an American style prenup, I guess people would have heard of that. And what that can do is set out for people in the event their relationship was to end, how they'd like their property to be divided. And what that does is then prevent them ever having to go to court or ever coming to see a lawyer at the end because they know that it's there. Look, they're, they're not simple agreements, they're complicated. The law's really technical about it. Both parties have to have independent legal advice and have a lawyer sign off to say they've given them that advice. I actually think that's fabulous because what it avoids is people's fear that someone's getting screwed over, for want of a better phrase, through that agreement. So everyone knows where they stand and as lawyers it's incumbent on us to give people advice about the impact of that agreement on their rights because obviously they're contracting out of the ability to do anything at the end yeah. and also the advantages and disadvantages of them entering into that agreement. But look, I think they're really good for... I think there's a few groups of people. Often people these days are getting into second, third relationships or they might have been married before right. and they've got assets they want to protect. They might be once bitten, twice shy. The other thing I see a lot is older people whose children are encouraging parents who are entering into relationships because they want their inheritance protected. But also, similarly, parents saying to their children, we're going to have some family money that's going to flow to you and we want that protected in the event there's a separation. So, again, I think a really important non-romantic conversation for people to have and then for them to go and see a lawyer individually and get some advice about whether that's right for them. I love the idea of that non-romantic conversation. Mm. I mean, you could have it over a nice dinner. You of could course. light candles and stuff, but important to have anyway. Alex, do couples get to actually view their car, the car they're going to use on their wedding day before their wedding day? Definitely. This is something we really encourage uh, when we're contacting clients to come down inspect the cars to see what they look like because sometimes in photos they may see them and I guess seeing their faces when they do walk down here is 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 quite exciting because we're so used to seeing these cars but seeing them get so excited for such a range is great um, another benefit is to sit in the cars we want to make sure everyone's com comfortable on the day the cars are going to be big enough we ask about the size of the bridal party are there any real tall people is everyone going to fit in these um, and it's the, the one way to really find out and to see the physical size of the cars. Um, there are some that will come in with one car in mind. They'll walk in here and especially these ones we're sitting in, they will uh, completely change their mind. Or even on colour, they're adamant, you know, want a traditional white car and then see a two-tone or black and completely change up. So it's very beneficial to come down here. Also to meet with us and, and get a feel for, for the service and, you know, customer customer care we have mm, really yeah so we highly, highly recommend that as a gay co-owner of historic Holyrood house what are some of the tips that you would um, tell provide to lgbti couples when looking for a, a wedding venue? i think the thing that we would say is most important is not to find a venue just because it looks right for you. You actually are going through the process of interviewing that venue. They're interviewing you as well, by the way, when you're talking about the day, the availability. You're looking for a place that is supportive. Um, it's not tolerant. We're not interested in tolerance. We're wanting a supportive and accepting environment. Somebody that's gonna celebrate you, your partner, and the diverse crowd that you're going to bring to this day. Look for that, it's really important. Beck, for LGBTI people, one of the most distressing times of their life is when a partner dies, um, whether it be suddenly or, you know, over a long period of time. Can you tell us about some of the rights that people who are in um, a 
same-sex relationship have at that mm. at that time of life. Absolutely, and it is often, you know, one of the most stressful times for anyone, but we do hear so many really sad stories mm. about LGBTI people specifically and their experiences. So, again, I think it's really important if you've got the opportunity to set up what you can to cover off some of that stuff before it happens. Obviously, that doesn't always work if there's a sudden death, but I think it's really important to understand that you know, there can be invalidation of wills with um, marriage or divorce, so that's really important. So I always say to people, whenever there's a big life event, go and check your will. So if you get married, if you get divorced, if you have a child, all those sorts of things, go and see a lawyer about your will and get some legal advice about it because there's some things you can do yourself, but you just don't want to leave things to chance. So I think that's really important. I think it's also really important to potentially look at things like power of attorneys, whether that's for medical decisions or financial decisions and get some advice around that too because sometimes we don't think we need these things until we need them. Does that usually occur at the same time that you change or write your will? Yeah, look, I um, a lot of wills and estates lawyers will say that. They'll say do it all as a package and yeah. do it together. We, as a matter of course, tell all our clients to go and check on those sorts of things because... As I say, I just think life events are really good triggers to, to do a bit of hygiene on those things. And and things like binding superannuation nominations, not a lot of people, I think, know who they've nominated or they might have done it eons ago before they were in a relationship. So just really good to check and make sure all those ducks are in a row before they need to be. We know that Ascot House prides itself on you know the excellence of its customer service um, in particular, it's catering. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to me about some tips that you would provide to couples around ensuring that the catering arrangements are the best and the most appropriate for their wedding? I think there are a couple of things you need to consider, uh, being the specific needs of your guests, as well as the kind of catering that uh, is best suited to you and your family, as well as your budget. So when it comes to your guests who might have, say, dietary requirements, then Put that on your invite. Ask your guests if they have dietary requirements and that way they can come back to you. You can pass it on to the venue or you might need to go and organise that through your own catering company if you're providing your own catering for your wedding. So consider the specific needs of your guests. Consider the kind of uh, food and catering that your family is used to. Um, would it be, say, more suited to a cocktail grazing style wedding where people can mingle, move around the room? Or would your family and your friends be more comfortable with a sit-down dinner or a buffet, for example? And it's not all venues, but at some venues it might actually uh, vary in the cost as well from a sit-down to a grazing.